Hello and welcome to a video on the Roomba Robotic Floor Vacuum Cleaner. This is an iRobot Roomba Sage from 2004. Yes, in 2017 as I'm recording this, it is a 13 year old robot. Uh, the question is, can something like this still work? Can it still clean the floor? Can it do exactly everything that is mentioned on the back of the box? Let's uh, hop over to the sofa because I still don't own a table and find out. So this is the Roomba Sage. This is part of the Discovery model uh, series. And we are just gonna start at the top of the ro robot and we're gonna go and work our way to the bottom, just kind of pointing out some interesting stuff on the way, like this big gray plastic bumper. This is how the robot navigates uh, around your room. So it's got three modes as far as I can tell. If you, uh, if you depress it on one side, then the robot will go, oh, I've hit something over here. It'll turn and then sort of drive off in a, in a direction. If you hit it over this side, it'll do the same thing and turn and go off in a different direction. Or if you hit it dead on, then it go, oh, I've hit, have hit something dead on. I'll turn right around and go in a, a completely different direction again. Almost, well, almost. Because over here, there's a little hole and an infrared emitter and a receiver. So this can actually follow a wall. And in fact, if I pull this out, it has a little brush on the side, yes. The Roomba actually uses this to scoop material and pull it away from the wall and pull it into the path of its brushes, which are underneath. We have the handle because if you want to carry it around, well, boop, 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 you can use that to pick the unit up. We also have the three lights here, which is the status of the battery, the status of the unit, and whether it's detected any dirt. I'll get into that momentarily. Then you have these three buttons here. So you have spot clean, room clean, and max clean. What these do are, uh, well, if you turn it on, boop, you would see these three light up, the power is good, and we would be able to put the uh, unit down and press spot if we wanted to clean a meter area. So if we wanted to use it like a dust buster, we could uh, use the Roomba like that. We could use the full clean mode, which means that it will use a program um, based on the longest distance it travels in a single straight line across any one of your rooms. So up to about 120 minutes, I think. Think. And then there's max clean. So if we were to hit max clean, this thing would drive around until the battery is empty. So that's what those three do. You also have at the bottom of the unit, uh, this big silver button here. And now that ejects this area here. Now this is the dust bin. So all the dust and debris actually end up in the back of the robot, which is kind of cool. And while we are looking at the top of the unit, just over here, kind of reaching across the camera, we can take this plastic piece off and there is an access port. So if you want to access the robot's kind of um, internals, if you want to do some modding uh, or anything like that, you can just kind of access it there. So we have flipped the unit over and we have our skirting board brush here. So this thing spins around and that will brush material from the skirting board to the edge of the room and put it in the path of these two uh, counter-rotating brushes here. This one is the beta brush, and this one is the soft bristle brush, and these will deposit material into the uh, main dust tank at the back of the robot. You also have this big blue strip here, and this is the squeegee vacuum unit. If you didn't think this was a vacuum cleaner rather than just a kind of a, a floor sweeper, well, it does actually have a, a vacuum ability. So uh, if you see people sort of reviewing these robots on YouTube and these two silicon, blue silicon um, strips are worn, completely worn away, then you have to know that their robot ain't gonna be picking up much dust. That is a bit of a problem because if you're trying to do a comparison between a very old robot and a very new robot, you're gonna need the old robot to be working. Speaking of working, we have the power pack here, which is what Roomba call the advanced power system. Sorry, I robot call the advanced power system. And it uses uh, a series of sub C cell batteries. So these things kind of sit in there. They're sub C cell batteries because they don't have the little uh, nobble on the end of the battery. There is a there's six on one side, six on the other. So you've got 12 of these little guys in there powering your robot to about I think it's about 17 and a half volts. So it's not too, too bad. 
the front guide wheel, which is sprung loaded, which is normally sat, sits way, way down uh, as it goes around on the floor. This model is not, um, that does not rotate. So if you're gonna be getting a charging unit for these things, then uh, be aware that the charging units or the base stations are designed for different front wheels. The newer ones accommodate the rotating front wheels where the old ones accommodate the fixed front wheels. Speaking of which, we have these two pads here, there and there, and those are for a base station, which I don't have. That was on the slightly more expensive model. Same robot, uh, just different kit in the packet. And the idea was that you could use the little uh, sensor on the top to find the base station, it would drive up to it when it was uh, low on power and charge itself up. It was that clever. Speaking of clever, the robot has these rectangular cutouts here, 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 and here. And they have infrared illuminators and uh, sensors in them to detect when it's driving around on carpet. If one of these says, hang on a minute, I don't see any IR beam or anything then what it can do is say, oh, I'm about to fall down some stairs. I better stop and go in the opposite direction. Now, what happens if it does drop a wheel um, down a stairwell? Well, good question. All of these wheels are kind of sprung loaded so that if one of these wheels drops, it has a drop sensor. That's what this is talking about. And it will just stop. It'll go, ugh. No, I'm falling down the stairs. It should play a sad little song. And then uh, you go over and say, oh, robot, you've tried to throw yourself off something. I better help you. Now, there is another way of having this thing not fall down the stairs, and that is to use the virtual wall unit, which has a little lighthouse unit on top, just like the Roomba has, which stops the Roomba driving into this thing and moving it around, because that would be a problem. Uh, it has a, uh, a beam that comes out the front of the unit from this little hole, and if I turn it on by pushing that, send the range to max, you might be able to see a little red glow from the inside. That's just a very low power infrared beam, which this thing will pick up and then will not drive through. So you can put it at the top of the stairs if you're that worried about Roomba driving down the stairs, or you can put it behind a wall or something. Um, so you don't want it driving into, uh, from the living room into the dining room or something, or just sort of gating off an area of the house, you can use these units to do that. So I'm gonna turn that off. It also has a range on it, which goes from one, two to three plus meters, which is uh, kind of redundant, I think, but probably saves a bit of power. So if you're at all worried about draining a D-cell battery, don't be because uh, we have three batteries here. We have the D-cell battery, which is in one of these, a C-cell battery, which is along here, and a AA battery for comparison. I'm hoping you can see all those. But wait, it's been 13 years. What happens if the battery runs out? Well, good news. You can actually go on a site that rhymes with a, an Amazonian rainforest and buy pattern batteries. In fact, you can buy the genuine batteries from uh, iRobot itself. Um, but for about half the price, you can buy pattern batteries, which are basically the same. Interesting differences are these screw heads here. Now, the uh, screw heads here are triangular. Uh, the ones here are standard Phillips. Um, this one is kind of glued. So even if you take the screws out, um, you're still gonna need to break the glue seal around the outside. Whereas this one, I don't think is glued. So if you have sort of um, electrical skill, you could probably just uh, rebuild the battery using parts from an electric shop. So we are going to dismantle the brush system, the dustbin, and we're gonna take the filter out of here just to see what's going on underneath all of this. And the first thing we're gonna do is take the dustbin off. There we go. Now it's very important to note that once you have it off, the large particles of dust from the brushes will end up in this uh, top area here. Dust itself will end up, now I'm gonna be very careful because this, uh, this is an active, <laughs> vacuum cleaner will end up in here collected on, I think it's, uh, well, it'd be this side of the filter. Now, uh, interesting thing to note, this filter is basically the same stuff that you used to get on CD sleeves, this kind of fabric -y stuff. So if you do need to make uh, a new filter, it's entirely possible. Although you, you can still buy these uh, filters from most websites that supply parts, I guess. Um, it just fits in this yellow cradle, which has one half of the uh, vacuum squeegee module on it. 
If we throw that over there, the other half is here. So the, uh, the air intake for the vacuum is just under there, goes in and then gets blown out of the back. There are two electric contacts here and here to power that motor. So that's what that does. Let's pull that over here. So if you want to take this off, we pull these two yellow tabs, one there, one there. It takes off the wire guard, which stops it sucking in uh, small children and cats. Throw that over there because now we can take these off. So this is the beta brush. This thing will spin around and it's uh, kind of a heavy silicon rubber. And uh, one of the things you should note, these little yellow end caps, they can come off. They're little brass fittings on them. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, if you are cleaning these over a bin, sometimes these will fall off and end up in the bin, just like that. So, and if you don't wanna go digging through the bin, you, you know, um, just keep an eye on them. Just, uh, just do it over a bit of old kitchen paper or something. Same thing here, this thing's detachable. Um, soft brush, soft bristle brush, not a problem. If you're gonna buy one of these secondhand, just make sure the brushes are good and not completely worn down. Otherwise you might wanna buy um, spare brushes or something for it. Throw that over there because we're gonna expose this area here. Now this does uh, move. Let's see if I can do it without getting my hand in the way. So this moves and it settles down on the carpet so those brushes can actually ride on the carpet itself. But the interesting thing is how does this detect dirt, areas of dirt, or things getting sucked into the vacuum? Well, these two here are acoustic sensors, these kind of uh, little uh, brass colored plates and if there are if there are large bits of dirt hitting these the robot will actually switch to max cleaning mode temporarily and kind of drive around in a circle until these uh, tell it that oh, all the dirt is gone and then it will resume its cleaning mode and lastly i think the only other thing that we can really remove is the battery unit itself so let's do that let's pull that out so that's the battery that houses our 12 uh, sub C cell batteries in there. And that's pretty much everything out. Now there is one other thing to note because of this thing being as old as it is, there was a bit of a problem with the Discovery model robots way, way back when uh, a lot of people found that the internal charging circuit, which is under here. So you would normally plug it in and it would charge itself that kind of stopped working after a while. So I do have something which is very hard to find these days, which is the Roomba rapid charge unit. So the battery, wow, there we go, fits in there, kind of like that. And instead of charging in seven hours, which is what this charged in, this would charge it in about three hours. This is now the only way I've got to charge this uh, robot, unless I want to open it up and either change the motherboard or actually find the offending. I think it was a MOSFET that went wrong on it and replace that. So I guess the only thing left to do now is to run the Roomba and see how much stuff it actually picks up after 13 years. So I'm just gonna hit power on, which is this one here and hit clean and just let it get on with it. Okay, we have run it around the room and the vacuum has now picked up what I'm assuming is all the dust. If we try and turn it on, it plays its sad little tune to say the battery is now empty. Now what I'm gonna do is lift this up. Now hopefully we'll see exactly what this thing's picked up. So we'll get rid of the Roomba unit itself. And uh, we've got this lovely plastic stuff here. And wow, that's, quite a lot of stuff. If I empty this out, this is the main dust container. So this is all the fibers, big bits and various bits and pieces. We have quite a lot of stuff built up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is also take out the, oh my, my word, this just keeps coming. All right, that's a, that's a thing. If I pull this out, uh, uh, that is the, oh my word, that is the vacuum part of the Roomba. So that is the squeegee vacuum. That's, ah, let's get rid of that as well. That is quite a lot of stuff right there. 
yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's just, yeah, that's all from the carpet. That is, that is, well, that wouldn't be great if it was actually on the carpet, but now it's been vacuumed up and I can get rid of it in the old bin and everything. So that was the Roomba Sage or Roomba Discovery or Roomba 400 series or 401, or as is written on the bottom, model 5107. It has quite a few names, but there is no denying this 2004 model robot still has the ability to go around and do exactly what it was built for, which is clean carpets. And you know what? It's not in such a bad condition for something that is so old and has been kind of uh, used so much that some of the bits are kind of missing, like the charging circuit's not working, but you know what? I love it. And if I had the opportunity to get one of the more modern ones, I would probably take it. So um, thank you for watching. If you like this video, definitely uh, check us a subscribe, uh, throw a like our way, maybe even leave a comment. And you know what? I will catch you guys next time.